The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. She was the first woman from Lawrence County, South Carolina to receive a medical degree. She became known as the Little Doctor she made history as a pioneer woman doctor, becoming one of the first female physicians to practice medicine in Anderson, South Carolina. She was from Anderson, and I had heard about her ever since I arrived in town, and I got real interested in doing a story on her. My name is Lily Wakefield. I am a nurse. I uh, was her assistant because I was the only uh, for a while, the only person in the office with her. Everybody in Anderson knew about Dr. Young, if, if for no other reason that she drove around in a 1957 Chevy, you know, that was, back in its time, it was the car and her husband gave it to her, brand new, and, and she drove it until she couldn't drive anymore. Well, she was feisty, um, and nobody pulled anything over her. I mean, she, when, when she was on that hospital floor, there was no question about who was in charge. And, um, yeah, I, I would say if you had to describe Dr. Young as she was feisty. Ann Austin Young was born on January 15, 1892, on a farm in Cross Hill, South Carolina. In 1910, she graduated from Presbyterian College as the school's first female class valedictorian. When Ann announced her plans to become a medical doctor, her family was stunned. She said when she first thought about she wanted to be a doctor, everybody wanted to know why. Why would she choose that profession? And she said that was just her calling. She had a conviction that this is what she felt called to do and that that was important to her and that the, the, the obstacles were not going to deter her from achieving her ultimate goal. Few women attended medical school in those days. Anne attended nursing school briefly. Then she got a job as a school teacher, saved her money, and was finally accepted to the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania in 1911. She knew that, that she was doing something that back at the turn of the century few women had done. It wasn't going to be as easy for her as it would have been for a man to, to, to walk the same road. On June 2, 1915, Dr. Ann Austin graduated from medical school at the top of her class. With one of the highest scores ever recorded on the state's medical exam, she was offered a job at the South Carolina State Hospital for the Insane in Columbia. In 1918, Ann married Dr. Charles Henry Young. The couple moved to Anderson County and went into private practice. Of course, you know, she was a part of a family who was well known in Anderson. Some of her practice was young girls just coming into womanhood that their family would want to see a female doctor. Then she had the uh, her regular OBGYN patient, and then she had older patients who could uh, relate to a woman better than a male doctor at that time. I think the Anderson community felt that she was a treasure. She far exceeded um, maybe what other people at the time were doing. Her patients were very, very dear to her, and I think they sensed that. For 52 years, the couple worked together until her husband's death in 1968. By then, Dr. Ann Austin Young had developed a reputation as a premier OBGYN. Her 10,000th baby was delivered in 1976. It was a girl, and uh, Tara Jade Knight was her name. Then I went back, and Dr. Ann picked up the baby and held it up. In fact, I got a series of, of, of photographs that I took. That one of her holding the baby probably says it all. Oh, now she have had three or four in labor at one time, and there was no certain number of how many patients she would see a day. I don't ever remember her, when I was working for her, having any death from delivery. If a patient was 
critically ill, she always called a specialist in. She delivered some babies that she delivered the mother. She would deliver a child. That child would grow up and have a baby, and they would want Dr. Ann to deliver that baby. Well, then that person would grow up. It was like three generations or four generations of people that she delivered all these babies. She didn't want to give up doing what she had done all her life and what she loved doing until she just absolutely could not do it. Dr. Ann Austin Young died in 1989. She was 97 years old. She was unique. She was dedicated. She let nothing change her mind if this is the way she thought it should be. She didn't like a lot of fanfare. She didn't like a lot of uh, recognition. She says, uh, oh, they want me to go to Columbia to be inducted. And she says, I don't need to do that. My legacy is here and my life will speak for itself. <laughs>